The event we're at today is the Fokker Scourge. This is the largest gathering of rotary engine triplanes since World War I, and here we are doing it in the United States. It's amazing. This engine here is the 120 horsepower Lerone. It is a rotary engine. It is in a radial configuration, so that all the, the cylinders stick out from the motor, but the difference between a radial and a rotary is the whole thing turns. So you can see the cylinders turn with the propeller, and that's what makes it unique as far as uh, aviation development. The number of flying rotary engines that you can go watch power an airplane is probably only a handful in the United States, maybe five, no more than 10 for sure. And that's just not very many. So it's a rare engine, it's a rare opportunity to travel back in time and hear it, see it, and then especially smell it. The castor oil has a distinct scent. So if you're here and you get to smell it fly by, it's, it's wild. The aircraft that are here, uh, we have four Fokker DR1s. One of them is an F1, which is a pre-production DR1. We also have a SOP with PUP that is rotary powered. So the four Fokker DR1s, we have this one. This one is labeled 23917. It's a fictional, historical fiction paint scheme. No aircraft was actually painted like this, but it's powered by the 120 horsepower Lerone uh, rotary engine. And then we also have Fred Murren's uh, F10217, which is a representation of Manfred von Richthofen's pre-production Fokker triplane. And it's powered by the 80 horsepower Lerone. We also have Paul Doherty's 45417, which is painted in Lauder von Richthofen's paint scheme. And it's powered by an 80 Lerone. The last one we have is 15217, which is painted in Manfred von Richthofen's paint scheme and it is Lycoming powered. And then the old Rhinebeck Aerodrome SOP with PUP is powered by the 80 horsepower Lerone, which is the engine it would have had originally. Um, so that makes it an extra special treat. The triplane, I think it was probably a, a lifetime uh, process to get here, but my grandmother made me read uh, a book when I was staying with her one summer when I was little. It was the Red Baron's autobiography. And I think most people who enjoy Triplanes probably are huge Red Baron nerds. They like the history, they like the, the legend, and uh, I'm no different. So uh, over the years, I, I thought, you know, it'd be really cool to have a Red Baron plane one day. But they're pretty rare. I didn't think I'd get one. And one day, the gentleman who built this, Jim Bruton, he flew it a little bit, enjoyed it for whatever experience he wanted out of it, and he was ready to sell it. And I happened to be in the right place at the right time to get it. And uh, I'm grateful that he let me have it. These things were all built by hand, so there's no kit for this. Somebody's got to go cut each block of wood, each piece of metal, everything is handmade. So the hours you invest into doing, making one little piece can be tens of hours. And I don't know, I'm probably into a thousand hours into this thing. After, I didn't even do the building, I'm probably a thousand hours into this. The main advantage of a rotary and why they came up with it was because the natural spinning of the motor where you see the whole engine turns propeller, uh, that natural spinning was cooling the engine, so they didn't have to have a large water cooling system or uh, advanced lubrication, so they could just spin the motor and keep it cool. The downside is you strapped a huge gyroscope to the front of your plane, and gyroscopes are useful in a stabilization capacity in a lot of instruments, but on the front of an airplane, they add a lot of control problems. So when you want to turn right, uh, it's very easy. If you want to turn left, it's very difficult because of the rudder inputs required and all the unusual pitching and yawing characteristics that come into play with it. So as you increase horsepower, make a bigger motor, you have a greater gyroscopic effect and eventually the airplanes would just be uncontrollable completely. And they, this engine isn't the limit of that technology, but they did reach it in World War I, so they had to go to fixed engines. It has its own quirks by itself. Regardless what motor is on it, it's very unstable. Uh, it always wants to pitch up. There's no trim system on it. That's one of my favorite things. You have to fly it. You can't let go. Uh, but the, those features of it make it unstable and interesting to fly by itself. And when you put the rotary engine on it, you get a whole extra set of problems to solve. And it is fascinating. It's exciting. But uh, it is challenging. So it's not something you want to do as a beginner. You probably want to work up to this and uh, develop the skills because it just handles in unusual ways. But I find the enjoyment in vintage airplanes where you're flying by the seat of your pants and you have to be the master of the airplane or it'll make, make a fool of you. So I really enjoy that aspect 
and so far I stay on the right side of being the fool, but it doesn't take much and I just enjoy, really enjoy the challenge.